Hello and welcome to the Echo 3D workshop for 2023. Thank you so much for attending this workshop. I'm super excited to walk you through what Echo 3D can do, all of its tools, and how it can help you with 3D asset management. My name is Bibi. I'm the developer advocate for Echo 3D. A little bit about me, I've been a Unity developer for a little over six years now. In general, I'm a big Unity enthusiast. I think it's one of the greatest things ever invented. And without that, we really wouldn't have all of these incredible VR and AR experiences. I've been with Echo 3D for about a year and a half, and I've been a developer advocate slash developer relations engineer for about three years total. Before we get started, I just wanted to do a little bit of level setting and define the terms that we're going to be using in this presentation. Um, at this point, I'm pretty sure you already know what VR and AR are, but I'll go over them anyways in case there are any people here who are unfamiliar. So virtual reality or VR is when everything around you is fully digital or fully immersive. And basically everything that you see is being projected onto your eyes through a headset or a type of goggles. And so that everything that you see in front of you can be controlled maybe with a trackpad or some controllers of some kind as opposed to augmented reality or AR, where you can still see the real world around you and it's being overlaid with digital content. This is usually through some type of optical see-through like glasses or a tablet. This is the biggest differentiation. A movie that represents both of these realities perfectly is actually Space Jam. It's a perfect example because it features both VR and AR. Michael Jordan in the beginning is being teleported into Looney Town. Everything around him is kind of crazy, digitally constructed with this fully immersed sense of art all around him. And he's interacting with Bugs Bunny and a bunch of the other characters. As opposed to what we have later in the movie, where we have the Looney Tunes coming out of their world to play basketball in our world. And so the realities have switched, which made the movie so interesting and so fun. So this is obviously kind of a funny example, but it's a very good one. Let me give you a few other examples. I'm sure that most of you have played Pokemon Go, so that's a perfect example of augmented reality. And on the left, we have Beat Saber, which is a virtual reality game for the Quest. And this is a dancing game, kind of like how when you used to play Dance Dance Revolution, you have all of these squares coming at you and you kind of have to dance and slay at them in the proper order. And you're fully immersed in this headset and you're using your controllers to control what's happening in the game. Another example is actually something that our CEO Alon created for his thesis project over at Columbia, where he took MRI scans and converted them into 3D models to actually assist with surgery. The physician would put on the smart glasses, the hollow lens made by Microsoft, and the physician was then able to see the heart floating above the patient and interact with it. The physician was able to get a 3D reference of the patient's anatomy in real time. This is a perfect example of augmented reality being used in a serious industry that could truly save lives. So while working on this project, Alon was getting a little bit frustrated at how cumbersome and time consuming it was to have to get all the scans, upload them, convert them, store them locally, be limited to making changes locally and so on. And all he really wanted to do was just deliver these 3D assets to an AR device remotely in a convenient way that didn't require him to wake up super early in the day to have to get into the actual facility to get this done. This inspired Alon to start talking to other people to see if other developers had the same issue. And they ultimately came to this conclusion that it was very difficult to deliver 3D content regardless of what it was, whether it was an AR experience, a VR experience, there really wasn't a way to consolidate everything on a back end in a central place. With 2D content, there's really no problem. For web, there's Heroku and a few others. For mobile, there's Firebase and Parse to name a couple, but there's really nothing for immersive. So who's going to build the same cloud platform for the same solution for 3D assets? 
Yep, that's right. It is Echo 3D. That's what Echo 3D does. We are a cloud platform for 3D applications that provides tools and infrastructure for 3D applications, spatial computing, AR, VR, XR, MR, Web XR, and we support any 3D application, whether it's face filters, NFTs, game assets, or anything for the web. We make it so you can upload any 3D data and let you stream it all around the world to any device. Let's dive into it. In terms of basic framework, the same way that a web developer kind of creates a website or an app with drag and drop, they are adding content. Whether you're in California or New York watching something on Netflix, we're both going to be getting the most optimized experience for streaming. At Echo, we took these two concepts and we combined them for AR and VR to deliver 3D data to give you the best, most optimized streaming experience. If you think about pictures and videos, you can't really move them on a website, right? You can, however, move a 3D object across the room and update the location. This is part of why 2D is different than 3D. You really need a lot of special tools to manage 3D content. So that's kind of what we built is this 3D asset management system and content delivery network that works across different platforms. It lives on the cloud and it deploys to all your devices. I'm going to show you some of our tools and how you can build a super quick AR experience to your phone right now for free and how you can also use it for other game engines like Unity. If you go to our website, you can easily create your own account. It's free and you have access to a lot of features. So right now you could create an attractive AR experience to show somebody, or you can develop something in Unity using our tool. The Echo 3D homepage has gotten quite an update. And if you go over here to developers, and you check out the SDKs and integration guides, you can see all of the different platforms that we support with 3D asset management, whether it's through API or SDKs. Of course, we have Unity. We just finished our Unreal Engine plugin, which is super exciting. And we have just about anything and everything you're looking for from JavaScript to a standalone AR core project on Android to iOS, Flutter, we're even working on some projects with Snapdragon Spaces, we have something for Niantic Lightship, we have something with some of our partners at Zapper, 8th Wall, Wix, 3JS, A-Frame, you name it, we probably got it. This is what the Echo 3D console typically looks like if you were to uh, create your account, and here you can see I have a couple of uploaded models already. So. A quick little tour up here is going to be where your API key is over here. We have a list of all the SDKs and integrations that you can use along with code samples and where you can find them. And over here, you could switch the interface to dark or light totally up to you. And over here are your account settings and the option to log out. The search bar here at the top will let you search for different 3D assets and you have the option to switch to a list view over here. Here on the left are a bunch of our other features and I'll go through those shortly. So to start, you can click on add to cloud or on this empty content card, it'll be the same effect. This is where you're going to upload all of your models. If you wanted to use anything from our library, you're more than welcome to do so over here. You just type in whatever keyword you're looking for and it'll pull up different results. Some of them are 3D, some of them are 2D, some of them are video. And alternatively, if you wanted to connect your Google Drive account to this, you could do so by clicking on this. So for the sake of the example, I'm going to upload my own model, which is this really beautiful lounge chair. We have a few different ways that you can view the model. The first way is if you wanted to see this on the floor. So with a mobile device, you would scan this QR code and the 3D model would appear in real time on your mobile device and just instantiate directly in front of you. If you wanted to change the target to see this on an image, then it will immediately instantiate on top of this QR code. And if you wanted to see this on a face, this would instantiate on somebody's face once it detects all of the features are there. Let's say you wanted to change the target of this 3D model. If you click on the content card, you'll see on the left-hand side a bunch of features pop up. 
if you go over here to target and edit target, you can change the location for where this is going to be showing up. So for example, if you wanted this to be a geographically triggering, you could do something here like New York. And then once it's in the confines of the city or the state rather, then it'll appear. Kind of like how Pokemon Go has location-based triggers, like when you were shopping in different retail stores, it's the same concept. And here, if you wanted to use this for an image, you could set an image marker and have this appear on top of the image. This is a really great idea if you have business cards and you wanted to show a 3D model when you present your logo. Something really cool that I want to show you before we move on is if you click on the content card, you're going to see this window pop up. At the bottom, you're going to see versions. So we actually offer version control for the 3D models. If you end up taking it over to the model editor or the scene editor or you make changes to it, you're able to go back just like you would in GitHub and roll back to that specific version of the model. You might be prompted to add your entry ID. You can find this right over here. If you click on the content card as well, it'll be at the bottom. This is a unique identifier for each of the objects so typically for the SDK in Unity, which I'll show you in a little bit, you're going to see the option to add your API key, which is this up here, and the entry ID. So in that case, we've made it easy. You just click on this overlapping two squares and it'll copy the entry ID. Another thing I would really love to show you and point out are the Echo 3D docs. So if you just go to docs.echo3d.com, you'll be able to find almost anything that you're looking for. So we have a little table of contents here on the left for all of our different SDKs and the basics of getting started. So please feel free to check these out. Starting with where to find your API key, which we've said is at the top over here. That's going to be your primary project key. And for every project that you create, you're going to have a different API key assigned. Over here, we walk you through the web console, which is what is happening over here and everything else ranging from the API to plugging in with Unity and Unreal, Scene Viewer, ARJS, Face AR, React, just to name a few. Basically, if it's 3D, we are integratable. So please feel free to check that out. We also have a convenient search feature and we have the Slack discussion. So our Slack channel is a fantastic way to get in touch with us. It's always active, there's always somebody online. So if you join our Slack channel and join the support channel, you'll be able to get an answer very quickly. And so let's tour the console. Everything here on the left is dedicated to help you optimizing your 3D experiences, um, give you insights, help you with whatever tools that you may need, all in a very convenient place. So if you click on content, this is going to take you, you know, essentially to your homepage. This is where all your content is going to live. Over here, when we're talking about data, this is referring to the global data for each of your items, which will be assigned to every single one of your 3D assets. Or if you wanted to do individual metadata for each of your content cards, you could do so on each of the object names. So three objects were in our console, right? For each one of these, we go down to data, we're able to add individualized metadata for each one. So for example, if I wanted to add something like change the scale by default and then change this to two by default, everything is gonna be doubled in size every which way, X, Y, and Z. And the same concept for each of the individual items. We have a bunch of predetermined metadata that you can choose or you can even add your own and fill in the value right here. And when we go down to the WebAR customizer, this is a really nice feature to create something that's branded. So here you're able to do a custom background image, which shows up in the mobile background preview. So when somebody scans or pulls up your AR experience, on their mobile device by QR code or by link, they're gonna have a 360 image that surrounds it. So you're able to add that. It's highly recommended to do a very high resolution image because it is stretched to 360. 
you're able to upload music and this starts and stops anytime there's an input. So let's imagine that this is your mobile device. This is the preview. If you tap on the screen, it'll start the experience. It'll start the audio. And then here you're able to do screenshots. You can enable the QR code feature down here. So right now we have it on. And you can also add different types of buttons or logos. We have a few different options. So for example, you can add the open AR view button, which actually shows by default up here, but you're able to set another one anywhere else. If you wanted to redirect to URL. So for example, uh, we wanted to put, if we wanted to do learn more, and then we have this take the user to Echo 3D. That will go ahead and do that. And I clicked on it. As you can see, it redirected to our website. Another feature that you can choose is uh, doing a message. So for example, if we wanted to do click me, <laughs> Then there we go, we have a happy birthday message. Moving along down to the model editor, here we give you a little bit of flexibility to work on the materials and implement these objects back into the console. So for example, over here, if you go to the edit, you have the options to tweak the lighting, work on the exposure for the object. You can use the environment as a skybox if you wanted to switch out the image, which would essentially engulf it in a similar way that the WebIR customizer would. You can work on your shadow intensity and the softness of the shadows, depending on what your preference is. And if there are animations, you have the option to edit them here. This case, the chair has no animations and you can do hotspots, which are essentially like annotations, and these show up in the preview as well. So if you were to click on this object, then whenever this is clicked on, this message is going to show up. As you can see, the default window shows you imports and exports. The exports give you three options. You can export to console, which will create a brand new model based on your changes. And you can apply to entry, which actually applies the changes directly to this asset. So the entry ID and the project ID are going to remain the same, which is a fantastic feature. So instead of having several different models, you can quickly add variations and go through and use those instead. And independently, you can just download this model and it'll download directly to your browser. So you could use it for whatever you want. And next, we're going to go over here to the materials where we can create a variant. So what this does is it basically creates a different version of the same model based on the changes that you have here. And like I mentioned earlier, it won't change the entry ID or the API key. So that means that you can have different versions of the same model and you can update them directly through your browser and all of the changes apply directly. So it's basically like having several models in one. So we're gonna create a couple of variants and I'll show you how these work. Okay, so let's load them and make our changes. So we label this one black couch, which means yes, we're going to turn it into a black couch. So we're gonna go down to where it says factor and turn this leather couch into this beautiful shade of black. Then we're gonna go back over here to the first panel and we're going to apply to entry. But first, I want you to take note, this is a leather couch in the background. So once we apply to entry, it's going to give us a pop-up and it's important that you wait until it makes a change. And there you go, it automatically updates and now you have this beautiful black leather couch. So let's do the same with the red leather couch. Once we change it, it goes back to the default so we can get a fresh perspective on what we're working with. And now we are picking the reddest red and we're gonna go back over here and apply to entry again. 
And as you can see, it automatically updates and now you have another variant. And all of your variants are stored in the dropdown so you can oscillate between all of the ones that you've created. After you've created your different variants, you can actually view them by typing in the share link in your browser for either desktop or mobile. And once you enter it on the top left, you'll see the option to view the different variants that you just created. So there's the red couch and here we see the black couch. And just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like on your mobile device when you're viewing the same QR code or typing in the link. So right here on the top left, you'll see the same dropdown. And alternatively, if you wanted to export to console and create a separate model, you could do that by clicking export to console. And right here in the background, you can see now we have another object. And if we wanted to download the model, it just downloaded as a zip. And lastly, over here, we have a JSON format of the same 3D model. So if you needed that, it's available to you right over here. And then moving along to scene editor, which I think is one of the cooler features that we have. If you click on your asset, it will immediately add it to the scene. And over here, each of these grids is about a meter. So you can think of this in terms of scale. Over here, we have the option to create a new scene, which will reset the scene. If you have a larger file or something not yet in the project, you can import it. And these are your export options. You can export the object as a standalone. You can export the scene. So say, for example, you have a lot of objects that are in the scene. You wanted them to be exported as one object. You could do that with that. You can export the file or you can, again, export to console, which will put it back in the content section. And over here, these are your controllers. So if you wanted to modify anything you just click on the object and this will be your directional capabilities so you have your x y and your z and you have the same for the rotation if you wanted to work on scale that's a feature as well and then here under edit you're able to make clones delete center clear the history and fix any color maps and then here, a really nice feature is if you wanted to do a group, so you could create smaller objects within a larger object. And we have tons of primitive shapes that you can pick from as well. We also have different lighting that you can add and different types of perspective cameras. So let's add a box, for example, just like in Unity, where you can add a basic object. We also recently added this Echo really 3D cool is also fantastic for enterprise level 3D asset management. Content we cards. have a few features that have been requested by our other enterprise clients that actually make a lot of great sense. So let me show you some of them. So the first one is a version control for 3D asset management. 
If you click on the content card and you go over here and to versions, to dive you can actually see a history of the changes made to the 3D model. So settings, anytime you need to roll back, you're able to do so right here in the console. Also manage some of these permissions. Another feature we have is adding annotations under the to each of these section, content cards. We have so say for example you're working on a project, to post do tomorrow, with the servers, really. edit this, change this, resize and this, for your change users, rotation. We'll show them the all the notes can be added here and, where they're and all saved. So whoever you're collaborating with can. Get your and notes in real time, time and everybody's on the same page. Information. Another so useful feature here, is adding collaborators and setting their permissions APIs levels. Calls. So if you go Anything over to the storage storage section, bandwidth, you'll see under user usage settings over that you're able to add different people. Days, and you're able to modify their permission whatever, levels. Um, so if you, you want, want to make use, them just a user, viewer, and or admin, you, can you have total control over that. Try them out and let us know what you think. But if we're looking at the lounge chair from today, we've really only used this today for the sake of this demo. So we're not really going to see too much. So now beforehand. you're able to set and down here under project on history, your project, we're able to close, kind of see all the adding users that, that are on, specific which is convenient and anything that's open a little bit. And all access requests will be found under the requests tab. Now, if we go under the optimize section where it says convert and compress, this is a really fantastic section to work with. Here we have the opportunity to convert our model into different formats. And typically this is something that you would have to do in Blender or use a free converter online, which there actually aren't too many great ones. So we welcome you to try this out. Um, so if we pull up this chair, this is actually a very high resolution model that we've pushed through ultimate compression and I'll show you how to use that. But first I just wanna walk you through this very quick. So you upload your file here, whatever it is that you would wanna do. And once that gets uploaded, you can convert it to whatever options are available based on that type of model, of course. You can center the model, you can run it through ultimate compression, you can compress with Draco as well. If you wanted to do polygon reduction, that would make the change for you and you're able to change the scale. Alternatively, if you have images, which is what one of the other assets is, you have some options to make changes here as well. So by default, anytime you upload an image to Echo 3D, it turns it into a 3D object. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the ultimate compression tool, which can compress your file sizes up to 100x. Whether you want to upload your own model, which you can do so by clicking on Add to Cloud or clicking on this empty content card and choosing your file, or uploading it from Google Drive, or picking one of our many 75,000 plus models. We'll choose the magnifying glass model. It's 11.12 megabytes. If you go down to convert and compress, this dropdown will show you all of the projects that are in the API key. So we will go over here to the magnifying glass, and we're just simply going to click on Echo 3D Ultimate Compression. This will give you a downloaded file automatically. And if we go and check the size, it is now 650 kilobytes as opposed to its original size, which was 11.2 megabytes. Okay, let me show you how ultimate compression works.
Underneath the learn section, we actually have a very large directory of inspiring projects, tutorials, our FAQ is here. We also have a link to our full documentation and sample codes on GitHub. So if you're not sure what you wanna make or you're looking to find an open source project to start building another project off of, take a look at the learn section. We also have the inspiration section, which has quite a few more items, not necessarily made in-house, but things that are similar. So between the tutorials and the inspiration, I'm sure you'll be able to find something that you are absolutely inspired to work on. And last but not least, we have the settings section, and this is your control panel for pretty much anything and everything that you need. Under profile, you'll see everything here to change your basic preferences, along with some helpful links over here. And under subscription is where you can manage your subscription. And if you wanted to manage your security, you could do so over here. We have quite a few options for that, ranging from SSL to anonymizing data, securing access, compression. Um, the most popular feature here that you'll be working with most likely is the secret key. And each model, each API key actually has its own dedicated security key. So if it's enabled, you have to programmatically add it to the script. Um, and if not, then you're able to use it as is. And under user settings, you're able to add collaborators. So you would just go ahead and do that over here. And all of the projects associated with your email address can be found here as well. So that does it for the tour of the Echo 3D console. Let me show you how to plug it into a Unity project. In order for us to use the Unity SDK, we're going to go download the most recent version of the SDK. So once you're logged into your Echo 3D account, just go up here to the top where it has SDKs and integrations, and you're going to click on the Unity SDK, which will start downloading instantly. So now that it's been unzipped, you can open the folder and you're gonna copy this parent folder into your project's packages folder. So in this case, it's just called <laughs> my project. So you're going to just paste the folder in here. This is automatically going to update in Unity once you pull it up. So as you can see, the Echo 3D SDK is now in the packages folder. We want to get the Unity SDK up and running, so there are actually two ways that you can do this. The first way is to use a standalone prefab as a singular game object. So regardless, you're going to drag the Echo 3D service prefab into the hierarchy, and that needs to stay there the whole time that you're using Echo 3D. The first way is to use the Echo 3D prefab, which is the Echo 3D hologram, as a standalone object in your hierarchy. Here you can see that there's a slot for the API key and entry IDs, tags, and a couple other options. Another way to do this, so we're just going to delete the hologram SDK. Maybe you have a game manager in the script, so we're actually going to go over here to the runtime folder inside the Echo 3D SDK, and we're going to add the Echo 3D hologram script to that object. It's really a matter of preference. Now that we have this installed in Unity, we're going to go back to the Echo 3D console and we're going to pick a 3D model so I can demonstrate how to get it integrated into your project. By the way, we have a library of over 75,000 free assets that you can use for your projects, for any of your commercial projects that are royalty free. And in order to access those, you can either go to add to cloud or click on an empty content card and search for whatever object you're looking for. And this will present tons of results, just FYI. But in our case, because we already have our assets, we'll just go ahead and use what we have. In our project, you see that there is a slot here for an API key and entries. In our case, these are the two most important pieces of information that we need to get from our Echo 3D console. Your API key is gonna be at the top of your project, right over here, and I gave mine a custom name, so it may not look like yours, but your API key will be here regardless. So I'm going to just paste that over here, 
And the entry IDs are individual identifiers for each of these content cards. So that just lets you have a little bit more customization when it comes down to deciding which assets you want loaded into your project. So in this case, we're going to use the telescope and you're going to copy the entry ID by clicking on these overlapping boxes and pasting those over here. Make sure that you save before you run the project and let's load in the telescope. And immediately you can see that we have loaded in the telescope right here. You have this asset that's being streamed in from the Echo 3D cloud, which is amazing because it keeps your project smaller and everything can be updated across devices and updated a lot faster through the Echo 3D console. So once Apple releases their SDK for the Vision Pro, this will just be another way to contribute to content creation and make it easier and more accessible for everybody who's building 3D apps. I hope you found this useful. Feel free to follow us or join our communities.